Okay, I'd like to show you a few of the kind of fine points of doing trigonometry calculations in Excel because they're a little tricky before you get used to them. And the problem stems from the fact that Excel doesn't really have a degrees mode and a radians mode like your calculator does. Uh, and it doesn't calculate trig values like it does in MathCAD where you have to specify the units all the time. Instead, Excel assumes that you're taking um, the sine or the cosine or the tangent of an angle in radians, and it's in always in radians. So if you want to take the sine of, I don't know, uh, pi by four, an angle like pi by four, which is uh, 45 degrees, well, um, I guess the value I'm going to put in here is uh, pi, bracket, bracket, that's how you get pi, divided by four, and it's a number, of course, and if I want to take the sine of it, it's equal the sine of that value. Because that value is already in radians, you get the sine of it properly, and it, you, you get this value. This is, um, of course, the sine in trigonometry terms. The sine of an angle means, uh, well, trigonometry has to do with right angle triangles with a hypotenuse, h, um, an opposite side, o, and it's opposite because it's opposite of the angle theta that we're concerned about, and the adjacent side, a. So for this triangle, for any particular value of theta, um, the triangle is pretty much fixed, at least in terms of its ratios and its proportions. Um, so if uh, this theta, the theta here looks to be about, I don't know, 30 degrees or so. So uh, the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse, well, that's a particular value. Um, for all of these triangles. That's what trigonometry is. And the adjacent over the hypotenuse is defined as the cosine of this angle of theta. The opposite over the hypotenuse is the sine, and the opposite over the adjacent side is the tangent of this angle. Um, and then, of course, there's cosecant, cosine, and cotangent, but we won't worry about those right now. To go the other way, the arc sine, or the inverse sine, of a ratio gives you the angle back again. So if the sine of theta is O over H, the A sine of O over H gives you theta again. Again, all in radians. Whenever we're talking about theta, it's in radians. If you wanted to take the sine of 45 degrees, you can put 45 degrees in here. And to take the sine of it, well, you can't just do the sine of 45 degrees and, uh, and hope for the best. There's you're going to end up getting the sine of 45 radians, which isn't what you mean. So you don't want to take the sine of 45. You want to take the sine of, well, 45, but converted to radians. So let's do that. Let's take the sine of the radians of 45 degrees. The radians of 45 degrees is going to take the 45 and convert it to radians. And then it's going to take the sine of that. Notice this number and this number are the same numbers. This, this is the sine of pi by 4 radians. This is the sine of 45 degrees. But pi by 4 radians and 45 degrees, they are the same thing. So you get the same value for the sine. Remember what the sine means. It's a ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse when this angle here is 45 degrees or pi by 4 radians. Okay, so essentially it boils down to this. If you want to take the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of an angle, and that angle is already in radians, then you just take the sine of the angle in radians. But if you want to take the sine of the angle and it's in degrees, you're going to need to include um, the radians command inside the brackets. Now, if I want to take an inverse sine, an arc sine of this ratio, right? This ratio, that's the sine of 45 degrees. If I want to take the inverse sine again, remember inverse sine gives you the angle. So to take the inverse sine, it would be the A sine of this number, right? This number, this is the ratio. This is the sine of 45 degrees. If I take the A sine of it, I should get the angle back again. 
and I do. This is the angle in radians. It's that same angle. If I want the results of this calculation to give me the angle in degrees, not radians, then what I've got to do is convert that to degrees. So I take the degrees of the arc sine of that ratio, and I get my 45 degrees back again. Okay, so um, when you're taking an arc sine or an arc cos or an arc tan, very often this is what you want. Take the degrees of the arc sine or the arc cos or the arc tan, and then you get your answer, which is an angle in degrees. If you want to take the sine of a number that's in degrees, this is how you do it. Sine of the radians of that number in degrees. This radians command converts the degrees to radians, and then you take the sine or the cosine or the tan. Okay. I hope this helps a little bit. It is a little confusing. It's a little difficult. Uh, the other thing is be careful about pi. Whenever you need pi in Excel, it's sort of a function, which is why it has brackets, but with no argument, nothing inside the brackets. So when you're doing calculations, never type, you know, if you want to calculate pi by 4, don't type 3.14159 or some numerical approximation of pi. Don't do that. Do this. Take pi, bracket, bracket, by 4. Do it this way. You notice the numbers are almost the same number. This one's rounded off to, I guess, uh, five decimal places. This one isn't, essentially. Uh, I hope that helps.